and um, talk to us about that under 13 result and how you're finding life as the under 13 coach. Great Rory, great yeah, I'm glad you asked me that. Um, <laughs> no, it's been brilliant, it's really good you know, yeah. really good group. Um, it's teething the, the league in general and there, there have been some sort of backlash to it regarding results, development, posting results online etc etc which I, I totally understand. I suppose you just need a year of it to sort itself out because yeah. you want to play stronger, not stronger, but better teams against better teams mm -hmm. and keep it competitive, you know. That makes total sense, but in terms of the age group, I think it's the perfect time. The learning in the group is amazing, you know. They really want to take it on straight away. I don't. I think that they're at that, you know, it's a special age, absolutely, but it's, it's, I think it's the right age to start getting the behaviours in and the values and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And it's just, just been, yeah, it's been great. It's been, they're so, they love it. Like they absolutely just love football and it kind of just refreshes that in me as well, to be honest, because yeah. they love watching the video. They love watching, doing foam rolling. They love all the things that you kind of maybe get mundane after a while when you're doing it for 20 years, but they just love it and it's been, it's been great. Yeah, I saw a photograph of the, the Cork City Academy Twitter post up with like all the guys foam rolling with you kind of leading them. Must be uh, fantastic like, for them to learn from someone like you about best practice and all that after, after matches. Yeah, yeah, it, it's all that stuff. Like, it's all just about them as athletes as well as people as well as players and we try to do it as much as possible, you know. So we just try to show them all those values like and all those behaviours without them kind of even knowing it. Do you know, there's... A, there's a lot to it, I suppose, now that I've seen the other side of it, there's a lot to the organising and to subtly placing stuff in places and hoping that it'll see through. But as I said, they just take on the information so well, like, and great group to spread from all over Cork, to come from east and west, travel two hours, train, no complaints. Um, they want to be at this club and, and it's it's amazing and, and, and I think Colin Healy is obviously doing an incredible job with the academy in general and there is that pathway now that people can look at and I suppose I didn't have that, you know, there was just City Youths when I started, so it was really just into that team. If you didn't get into that team, you, you might have struggled against Cork City in general. So it, it's it's great database of players now that we're kind of building up as well. Yeah, for 12 and 13 year old kids to have the Cork City badge in there, on their jars, it must be an incredible thrill for them. But yeah, you can see it. Like, it for me if I was you know, Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like the first day we came down here to play first game, I told them to take a walk out in the pitch there last, take a walk out, and they're about to call them to bring him in. And they were like going through imaginary goals, like so each other chipping in imaginary balls and volume, and, and they were imaginary celebrating. You know, like you're just thinking that's great, like, and, and they just bring that enthusiasm, and honestly, filters through, like, yeah. Get back to Friday night, you're going into the game on the back of that two defeats. What's the movie like in the, the dressing room since the last Friday night? It was good. Today was good. John just hit the reset button Monday morning. It's one of his strengths, you know. He just cut straight through it. Um, just as I said, hit the reset button. We've been down this road before, and he's been down this road before, and he, he fully understands how early it is in the development of this group in particular because it's been put together, and there's new faces, younger faces. There's a team out there though today that Liam put together a five side team, and until I came into it, the average age was probably about 19 or 20, you know. So, um, it just takes that time to mesh in, you know, and then as I said from the very start, when I spoke to you guys at the very start, it's all about the values and, and, and behaviours in, in this group that will eventually start to feed through and it'll click. But um, yeah, absolutely Friday is going to be a very good game and, and the league is much more competitive this year. I suppose we're talking about two or three different teams and that's really interesting too from, you, from your guys' point of view, you know. And as club captain, then, is there an onus on you to stand up in the dressing room and say, look, lads, we need to improve, we need to get better, we need to, to work harder? Yeah, I, I think. As I, I suppose you know me, Rory, I, w I wouldn't be one of those shouting kind of guys maybe in that dressing room. I, I just like to think that you come in and, and you do your work. If you've won 4-0, you come in and do your work. If you've lost 4-0, you know, and that's the kind of steady <coughs> influence that I would have seen players do in my time. So I like to do the exact same and it doesn't change. And that's, I suppose, the biggest lesson in football that you can, that you can get. Absolutely, game day is totally different, but I'm talking about the day to day, week to week, and, and that's that's really important. Have you have you been kind of putting armor on the shoulder to a couple of lads, or kind of, I mean, in that responsible position you have? Yeah, I'm not not necessarily, not necessarily really. Like, there's the, there's always conversations, and there's always conversations, and 
I'd like to think I'd be fairly steady in those conversations regarding the bigger picture, perspective, focus on the process, because I suppose it's so easy in this game to get look at results and straight away look at that and the result is as a result, for want of a better word, of the process that you put in, you know. So that is always where I look to first. And then just a tiny dash of perspective as well too on things, you know, it, it brings things down to earth a little bit. But we know we know as a group that we need to we need to improve and that's absolutely that's absolutely the focus. And uh, John touched on it there were a goal that previous years, you know, defensively as where Croc City built their foundations for the success you've had really in recent yeah. years. But like three three goals against on uh, on Friday night at home. I think it was the first time we conceded three at Torrance Cross in three or four years or something. So like there are concerns they're not offensively as well, obviously, you know, especially against the bigger teams I suppose. Mm. Yeah. It's a concern. Absolutely, Trevor, something that we we'll, we work on, something that we look at. I think that the league has slightly evolved in the sense that I suppose before when I was in the league it was four four two, everybody played the exact same, big striker, small striker. Then when I came back in fifteen, everyone was playing four three three and that was it. So you had one striker up against two centre halves. And now Rovers at the weekend they tried something different, like they they played a lot of midfielders in the central area, like which created problems for us. And that, that, that's, that's the challenge for us moving forward, to be able to deal with different teams now we're going to do different stuff. And for us to impose our games, then our plan on those. And it's, it's a massive learning curve for us and for, for me, myself involved, seeing that last, last weekend was something different. So um, I can guarantee we'll be more prepared the next time. Not that we weren't prepared this time, but we'll be more clued into it, having experienced it. Um, but yeah, you're, you're, you're spot on about, about the defensive mm. stability that you need. Yeah, you're obviously watching on, and with your experience, like, I mean, the two of the goals, like, they got so much room to shoot, there was no closing down. Mm. Like, the, this John taught you about that, are you watching it? And are you talking about it as a defensive unit? Like? We would, we'd, we'd, have, we'd have chats after the game, yeah, like Connor, Dan, Sean, quite young lads in terms of centre backs, like, and towards the other end, but you know, you're looking for them to peak in the next five or six years. So the more of those kind of experiences they're exposed to earlier will, will, will mean a lot in terms of their learning. But we do, we chat about it and we, we, we come in after games and, and immediately, probably not because there's frustration and disappointment and anger. It's probably more on the Monday and Tuesday of this week that we would have touched on stuff, but straight away then you've got to look to, 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 to Pat to the beginning what they're going to do because I think they might go three, you know, they might go five, three, five, two, which is again is something different. Which I quite like. I suppose I'm, I'm probably more exposed to this now coming from the coaching side of things, but um, it'll be another interesting challenge for us. Mm. Do you feel the frustration from the fans when you're watching, especially the home matches? Like we've only we've scored three goals in four matches. Mm. You know, do you feel the frustration of the crowd and the way we're playing at the moment with Cork City are playing at the moment? I understand it, Trev. I definitely do. Yeah, being a Cork City fan myself and being what's what's happened since, since I suppose I've come back in fif since 15 and. When I was here in seven and six, you know, before I left and, f and five. And for me, that's where Cork City teams always have been and always will be. Obviously, a lot happened in between, which puts perspective on it. But I do understand the frustration. But I know the, I know the Cork crowd and I know, I know what they want and I know what they deserve. And I know the patience and, and love they have for the club. So I, I've never questioned, I've never questioned any, any any loyalty or anything like that. Yeah, how do you feel at the moment? What's your fitness like now? Your month against uh, COVID and the. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel good. I feel good, Trevor. Yeah, it's it's as I said, it's kind of uncharted waters in terms of how how I deal with myself and how I train. And it's a real trial and error thing, you know, which is hard. It's frustrating at times for John, and I get that. And but me myself personally, I suppose I'm not the long term answer. Like I I, I know that as well, you know. So it's about blooding in new ones, and, you know, and, and bedding me in as well when, when it needs, I suppose. That's mm -hmm. how I'd look at it. Very and important to get back to what he made is obviously like you can't even think about three defeats on, on the spin. Yeah, absolutely true. It's so important to win on three. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and every game, every game is important, and we know that. Every game is huge. And when you're wearing, play for Cork City, whether you're under 13 or senior team, Everyone wants to beat you, you know. So the, the group is fully aware of that, yeah.
But I give them the results and back to back the feeds are very early in the league now and even at those early days, it's just a slump or do you feel it's a crisis? I wouldn't use either of those words to be honest not. Um Just looking for a hedge. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally get that. I totally get that. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, it's a crisis, right? <laughs> Brexit's a crisis. <laughs> <laughs> it writes itself. Um, no, I, I think it's I think it's early days in in a, in a young group and a group that's still finding its feet. You know, I think that's what it is. I think so so, so like four defeats in the first eight games, I think. Yeah. If you go back, I think Dennis Hurley did a piece this morning where he's gone back over the past seasons and he was going to 20 games into a season before you hit the fourth defeat. Right. The year, the year before that or the year after. It was even a longer spell over the year, he went 22 or 23 mm. games unbeaten. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? It's Absolutely. Four defeats in eight matches, people are gone. Absolutely, and that's fair, and that's fair. Mm. I suppose in the year we won, that, that year we won, went 22 on uh, uh, wins, or undefeated, sorry, like you said, in the first season. We probably ended the season with, with four losses in that, you know, when we slumped or whatever, yeah. words you want to use towards the end of that season. When it comes, you never know in football. <laughs> so I remember those last few games, away at Bowes, home to Derry, they were strong games, like just to get points, you know. Yeah. And that's... I suppose, like I said, you just never know when it comes to football, you never know. 20 seasons now, I've always had some sort of dip. There's your word, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So when it comes, you just never know, but it's important and absolutely the focus is to, to, to move on and, and get out and get going as quick as you can. And we fully understand that.